Okay, good afternoon, everybody. My name is Elaine Lightborn Perez. I'm the owner and the host of Virtual Events by Elaine, and it's World Lymphedema Day, which um, March, the whole month of March actually is World Lymphedema Day. And today we are especially celebrating Every year we celebrate um, actually on March 6th. So with, with that said, I have a whole lineup for us today. And the whole, the whole idea of this event is to make awareness of lymphedema, especially here in the Turks and Caicos Islands where I live. It's just a few of us um, living with this disease in the islands that I should say that is that or was diagnosed. But want to make or uh, get awareness and get it out to persons that even if you feel like or if you know somebody you think that has it, to go and um, seek medical attention and find out and get and start getting better care. Because when I first found out, it was, I mean, I, I probably was a year and just in and out of the hospital, never knew what was going on. And I wouldn't like for that to happen to some, someone else. So this is the whole, the main event for having this, what is lymphedema? So I have uh, our special guest is Dr. Franson from Jamaica. She is my therapist. I just wanna just highlight her. She's not, I'm not gonna bring her on right now. But I want to make special recognition to her. And then we have um, a few other persons like Ms. Anne, Elizabeth Ann Williams from Grand Church, Turks and Caicos. Anne is on. And then we have Miss um, Mitchell. I don't want to mess up your name. Miss <laughs> Mitchell, we have her on. And she's actually from Texas. Keisha, I'm going to call you Keisha. We have her on from Texas. So she is going to be sharing. And then later on in the event, we have a lady out of Trinidad, Rhonda, which she is a natural doctor. So she want to share a bit um, on, I guess, relating to the lymphatic system. So with that, with that said, sorry, I'm going to ask me if my daughter is on, Khadija, to please um, unmute your mic if you can, and she's going to lead us in a word of prayer. Do you think both of you guys in the same room? Okay, is these if you herself? I'm, I'm, I'm getting a feedback. Hold on, I'm going to Okay, all right. I saw that. Sorry. As Deja comes on, I want to make mention of we have, we have persons from the hospital that is on also. Okay. Um, so I'm glad and happy to have a few of the therapists from the hospital. They are on and listening in. So we'll, we'll, we'll also have a time where you guys want to chime in and to say something. So later on down in the um, event. So Deja, I think you should be able to come on now with that prayer. Good afternoon, everyone. Heavenly Father, God, we just want to give you thanks. We want to give you praise. We lift up your name this afternoon. Father God, we give you the praise that is due to your name for allowing us to be here this afternoon and to be a part of this, this wonderful event. Father God, I pray, Lord God, that whatever is said today, God, we might learn something new today. And I pray, Lord God, that we would 
have a keen eye, Lord God, and you give us understanding and you would help us, Lord God, to go with the knowledge and help us to get ourselves checked out or anyone that we might even know to encourage them to go and get checked out, Lord God. And to be more prepared, more aware of the things to do, Lord God, and to take better care of ourselves. I pray, Father God, that everyone that has to speak today, Father God, that you will use them, Father God, to display or to relate your knowledge onto the people. And I pray, God, that your word, Lord God, will go forth. And I pray that you will give us wisdom, knowledge, and understanding in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Okay, thank you, Deja, for that prayer. Now, um, I'm going to play a video. I was trying to get her to come on and do this live, but unfortunately she can't. So I'm just gonna play a song. It's, it's my last daughter, her name is Krishana. And I'm just gonna play a, a song um, that she is singing and then we'll move forward. Tired of living life on a merry-go-round. You can find a fighter, but I see it in you, so we gon' walk it out. Move mountains, we'll walk it out and move. And I'll rise up, I'll rise like the day, I'll rise up, I'll rise unafraid, I'll rise up, and I'll do it a thousand times again. I'll rise up, high like the waves, I'll rise up, in spite of the age, I'll rise up, and I'll do it a thousand times times again for you Take the world to his feet and move mountain, bring it to his feet and move mountains. And I'll rise up, I'll rise like the day, I'll rise up, I'll rise on a frame. And I'll do it a thousand times again for you. That we have each other And we will rise We will rise We'll rise oh, oh, oh. We'll rise I'll rise up Rise like the day I'll rise up In spite of the end I'll rise a thousand times again And we'll rise up high like the waves We'll rise up in spite of the ache We'll rise up 
and we'll do it a thousand times again for you. time I hear that song, it just moves something within me. I'll rise up. And what a fitting song for this event. Okay, um, we're moving quite a bit ahead of time. Um, so what I'm going to do now, I'm just going to read a short little bio of Dr. Frenson from out of Jamaica. Dr. Frenson is a physical therapist in women's health. She is a certified lymphedema therapist. She specializes in the pelvic floor and management of swelling. Mostly treats, um, she mostly treats cancer-related lymphedema involving the arms and primary lymphedema of the legs, also trunks, the face, and the genitalia area. So Dr. Frenson, um, I have known her now, I'm telling you for about over, I should say about over, quite over 16 years now, been going back and forth to Jamaica for treatment. So Dr. Frenson, without any further ado, are you ready to come on? I'm here. <laughs> okay, so I am going to come out of the screen and then let you, do your thing. You'll have to. You, um, can you have one put on your camera? Yes, mine is on, but you're. You have to. You have stopped it, so you need to let me in. Okay. What I. I don't know why that happens. Okay. Check to see if you can come on now. All right. Hi. Hello, everybody. Hello from Jamaica, and um, happy lymphedema day. I hope this is a, a day when there will be a change in the life of all our lymphedema. Uh, clients are, I don't want to call you patients because you're living. So I, I'm just hoping that today your wellness will move forward and you'll conquer whatever problems you are having related to your lymphedema. And if you don't have lymphedema, that you'll be so educated about it that when you do see individuals with lymphedema, you may be able to, to guide them in the right direction. So many of our patients went through years and years without knowing that there was help. Many of them saw, saw several doctors, even, you know, for over a period of 20 years. And finally, uh, when they do receive help, it's a tremendous change in their lives. So I am going to do a little presentation today to, to educate everyone about lymphedema and what can be done. So I'm going to share my street, screen. So Elaine, please allow me to share screen. Okay, you should be able to, what is it telling you? Uh, okay, I think I'm there. It's asking who can share, so that should be okay. So here we go. All right. Let's move that panel away. Okay, so there is help. So for those who don't know, the symbol for lymphedema is actually that butterfly and the color is purple. So what is lymphedema? It's such a big word. It has so many letters, three and three, six and three, nine, 11 letters. What it really is, is the accumulation of a, a particular type of swelling. So it's not the same as when you sprain your ankle, although it's the lymphatic system that really has to deal with the, 
with any swelling, but it's when swelling persists or fluid persists in the tissues over a period of time. And this, this fluid contains cells and other components of life that eventually is, is just not moving enough and accumulates in the area. So it is the accumulation of this protein rich fluid in the tissues. And really, it is usually associated with some form of blockage or if there is an overload of fluid. So it can occur in any part of the body from the face all the way down to the toes. You can have uh, clients who have several areas of involvement depending on the underlying cause. So we do see patients who have lymphedema in their breasts, in their trunk and even in their genitalia. So in our part of the world, most of the lymphedema that we do see is related to cancer surgery or and or the application of radiation in the treatment of, of cancer. So it's actually related to cancer treatment. And unfortunately, this is one of the side effects, but it's, it's life sparing. Cancer treatment is life sparing. So what exactly is happening is, if we look at this slide, we see on one side where blood comes in and on the other side, the tube shows where blood leaves the tissues. And there's some form of exchange in what we call capillaries. So outside of the capillaries, you have cells. You have little cells that are bathed by fluid. And it's this fluid that has to be delicately balanced. Uh, some of the fluid goes back into the vessels, into the capillaries and goes back towards the heart. And some of the fluid is actually absorbed by little lymph collectors. So the lymph, lymphatic system plays a very critical role in balancing the amount of fluid that's in the tissues. So if there is some form of obstruction, you could have a, a, an excess accumulation of fluid within the tissues. And really that's what is the beginning of lymphedema. So there is a certain delicate exchange and, and corrective balance that has to take place. When this, happen, when this doesn't happen, fluid collects and we get obvious swelling. So there are two types of lymphedema. There's primary lymphedema and secondary lymphedema. Primary lymphedema occurs when there is a developmental abnormality or anomaly in the lymphatic system. And quite often we see it involved in the lower extremity. So you may see an individual with one leg that's bigger than the other. This is a classic uh, example of what it would look like. It can present because there is, an, there is a problem uh, from before birth. It's something that they're born with are born with that disposition, they may have inherited it because sometimes when you do history of the families, you'll see that many times way back in generations before there were similar, similar complaints. You can have lymphedema that arises in an early age or it can occur after 30 in, in the later age, even though it's because of the underlying uh, developmental or congenital problem. Secondary lymphedema, is brought on by damage, damage to the normal flow of lymph along its pathways. So for instance, in the treatment of cancer, you may have the removal of lymph nodes, and this causes an obstruction of the movement of fluid from the arm or from the leg in the case of uh, removal of lymph nodes in, in, in uh, genital or uterine cancer or prostate cancer, and that would lead to swelling in the leg. There may also be circulatory problems, venous return, a backup. There may have been a blood clot in the leg some years before or some months before, and the valves may not be working. And for this reason, the blood backs up in the leg. When it backs up in the leg, it also backs up in the tissues and the individual eventually develops swelling. The signs or symptoms that we see is swelling. So quite often we think about the arm and the leg, but as you can, can see in the picture, this lady has swelling on the left side of her trunk. Left side of her back is more congested than the right. You may also find skin changes such as discoloration or thickening of the skin. You may find heaviness or tightness or a sensation of fullness, uh, for example, in the breast or in the genitalia. You can also notice that your jewelry rings may be getting tight, or you may notice cords. And quite often these are confused with blood vessels. But as you see in the picture, there is tightness in, in one of the lymph collectors in this lady. And um, when she observes it, it's usually quite painful as well in the arm. So there are several stages. 
Uh, in fact, there are four stages of lymphedema. And the first stage is just not visible. The second stage goes down overnight. Whereas the third stage, even when you go to sleep and awaken in the morning, the lymphedema is, or the swelling is still present. And of course, the final stage, end stage lymphedema is known as elephantiasis. So uh, in Jamaica, we refer, we refer to it as elephantitis. It's actually the same thing. So usually these individuals have very large limbs, but it's not just about the size of the limb, it's also about the condition of the skin because lymphedema is actually a, a, a dermatological condition. It's a, it's a complaint involving essentially the skin. It is a skin that gets thick. It is a skin that is exhibiting the swelling and associated with the swelling, there's always, there's also the risk of, of changes such as infection, darkening, or scaliness or little, little growths or folds, all sorts of problems that can arise if it is allowed to reach to that stage. So quite often you'll find that at the reversible stage, most individuals will just elevate the part because it will go down. Unfortunately, this is the prime time for intervention. This is the prime time to start treatment if it can be properly diagnosed because it's eventually going to progress to the next stage. So what does treatment involve? Treatment involves what we call complete decongestive therapy. In some countries, it's referred to as complex decongestive therapy, but the components are the same. And this actually is the gold standard that is recognized for the effective, efficacious management of lymphedema. It involves care of the skin, because we said it's a skin problem. It involves drainage of the skin, so sometimes people get scared because they think we're going to place a needle in the skin. It's actually a manual drainage that is done using a very gentle technique of using the, the hands. This is, this is combined with compression therapy. And the compression therapy is in the form initially of bandaging. Uh, so in the first stage, bandaging is used before patients in the second stage are progressed to the use of compression garments. Exercise is also very effective or very useful or certainly combined with the other components of complete decongestive therapy to help to, to move the, tis, the, the fluid from the tissues. When the muscles contract with the bandages on the outside, it squeezes the fluid upwards, squeezes the fluid back into the system where it can be mobilized to healthier areas and to be properly drained away. So we treat as I implied just now, we treat patients in two phases. We treat them in what we call an intensive decongestive phase, and then we prepare them for self-maintenance. Because lymphedema is a chronic, lifelong condition, they will always have to be managing their lymphedema. Or if, it's not, if, it's, if, if management isn't continued, then they will return to that phase of congestion. And again, we'll have to restart the process of decongesting and uh, refitting with garments. So in the stage zero, it's a lot about patient education and awareness. It's a lot about knowing that if you are at risk for lymphedema, that you be looking out for it, be observing your skin. So for instance, if you had a mastectomy and they, you know that they removed all your lymph nodes, the risk of acquiring lymphedema is very high. So it's important that these individuals be observing their skin for early signs of swelling so that it, it's not allowed to progress to the next stage, which would be a full-blown stage one or even a stage two, which is quite often where we see most of our clients. In the next stage, the reversible stage, it takes around two to three weeks, depending on the extent of, of the swelling, to manually drain the, the, the part. And as I said, we combine that with bandaging and a lot of education, some exercise, and uh, we send the patients home in these special short stretch bandages. These are bandages that are specifically designed for swelling, for the management of, of swelling in lymphedema. And when we apply these bandages, they are kept on overnight. They are removed by the therapist the following day and, and replaced in a snugger fashion after, so that any, any loss of, of swelling is accommodated by the adjustment in the, in the repeat bandage. When the swelling is down, as a lymphedema therapist, you fit the patient or fit the client with a compression sleeve. 
And there are, there's a lot happening with compression sleeves now. They come in patterns, they come in various colors, and they, are, they can be beautiful. You can even wear two sleeves if you don't want you know, to be conspicuous that you're in, 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 in a sleeve or in a stocking. So you, you can wear both to ensure that you have some balance you know, if, if that's what makes you feel comfortable. But sleeves are to be worn all the time. In, in the daytime, sorry, I warned you in the daytime. And at night, they are removed for sleep. Uh, the, the individual is also going to continue their skincare routine and their decongestive exercise. As, as you approach the patient with a stage two or irreversible lymphedema, these individuals take a little longer to resolve their swelling. And sometimes, although the procedure is the same, you may find that in, as they go into the self-maintenance or the second phase of treatment, they need to wear compression garments at night. So these are special garments that replace the, the bandages and they are worn all throughout the night and removed during the day. So these patients have a, a resilient uh, swelling that if you, if you remove the compression, it returns. So they have to wear these night compression garments. I'll show you pictures of those shortly. They also continue their decongestive exercise. And it may be necessary if within this phase that you don't get it all down, that you repeat it further down the line when you establish that the patient is, you know, not managing necessarily to get it down on their own, you may intervene again. And certainly it's good to have maintenance follow-up visits so that you ensure that your patients or your clients or you, my patients, are, are continuing to improve instead of recurring. Uh, the stage three elephant, elephantiasis patient takes much longer. And most times within one phase, you don't automatically, you don't get it all down. So sometimes you have to see these, these clients two to three times per year to finally get the swelling all the way down. Uh, so it can take as much as six to eight weeks. And it's very important that they be fitted with garments afterwards, because as soon as you're finished the intensive or decongestive phase, they have to be placed in garments. Usually clients with elephantiasis have to wear uh, garments that are custom fitted for them. And sometimes this, this takes a while for it to, to be delivered because it has to be made specifically for the patient and you can't allow them out of bandage during this time. So manual lymph drainage, the effect is to increase the flow and the mobility of the lymph. Uh, it's an obstruction, it reroutes lymphatic flow to areas that are not blocked, areas that are more central and certainly areas that have a healthy flow. Compression therapy, this is an example of one of my, my patients in uh, compression bandages of involving the lower extremity. Uh, sometimes we also use a little chip bag. So I know for sure that she has a chip bag on the ankle, on, on the right ankle that is giving additional pressure in that area to ensure that she, uh, she gets the necessary pressure on that focal area to get the swelling down. Uh, there's also uh, bandage alternatives, as we spoke about, and compression garments. And these are examples of them. So these are night garments. Uh, the, the black one and the first one on the, on, on the left are examples of night compression garments. This is a gentleman who probably had surgery to his, uh, his, his sinus, for example, and he ended up having swelling under the throat, lymphedema under the throat. So he wears that at night. So the individuals who have facial lymphedema, they wear their compression at night because during the day, gravity helps the swelling to drain. This is an example of a, a special compressive garment for the genital area of the male that is giving compression to the area around the, the penis, the penis itself, as well as the scrotal area. And this is a very effective garment. On the right side is an example of a compression stocking that is the complexion of the lady. So now we can get colors that are more appropriate and less conspicuous. So this, is, this shows the effect of, of compression bandaging on this uh, particular client who is depicted in all four pictures and it shows her fitted at the end in her compression garment with a leg that is still large, but she does have uh, stage three lymphedema, elephantiasis. So it will take probably another course to, would have, to have gotten her all the way down. So compression therapy is very important. It has to be worn 
for there to be sustained benefit from the management of lymphedema because it, the skin requires that, all that pressure to ensure that there is no re return in the swelling, as well as to compensate for the loss of elasticity that sometimes occurs in the skin. Uh, garments are, as I said, very easy to tear. So it's important that in addition to them being worn all day, that they be handled carefully. So it's important to wear gloves to ensure that when you pinch the stocking, you're not tearing it with your nails. People will complain that, oh, I can't get them on, they're too stiff. Ways around that. First of all, you have to be taught to do it properly. It's not a matter of going into a store and buying a stocking. You have to be taught how to do it. And when, you, when you've learned how to do it, it's much easier to go on. They're also done in aids. This is an example of a done in aid uh, that is used to get on a lower extremity um, stocking uh, for the individual to have some ease in the application. It's important that garments be checked to ensure that they are still given the com necessary compression uh, possibly every six months. Uh, we certainly know that we go further with our sleeves and our stockings because they are so expensive. Uh, and it's important too that they be worn during exercise. So speaking of exercise, this is an integral part, as we said, and they're, they are performed with the compression garment or bandages in place. And these consist of simple exercise, bending, straightening the elbow, making a grip, raising the arm above the head as if to pick apples, but just to take the, the, the muscles off the limb, whether it be the upper limb or the lower limb or the tummy or the face, taking them through the routine use of the muscles in the area. This is, an, this is a patient who I actually saw who we put her through the routine of using the, the special type of lotions that are pH balanced and her skin certainly improved and her swelling definitely went down with complete decongestive therapy, manual therapy, uh, bandaging and finally she was placed in compression stockings and she did very well. Uh, so the skin care is very important, you know, we take it for granted that we all know how to care for our skin, but the lymphedema uh, skin has to be particularly or meticulously kept clean. It needs to be checked for infection, for cracks, it has to be dried properly between skin folds, and it's not to be scrubbed because the skin already is very um, dry and can definitely crack easily. So it's best to just pat it with a soft towel. And you use particular lotions that are pH balanced that will allow the particular acidity of the skin to not allow uh, it to, to be easily broken down by pathogens or other infections. Uh, some clients may have had radiation of the area, so there are particular lotions or creams that need to be applied. And of course, direct sun exposure in these, in these clients is, should be avoided. There are other therapies that um, besides complex decongestive therapy that may involve the use of pumps, uh, elastic taping. So for instance, I use uh, elastic taping when I'm treating the trunk or the face or the neck because it's not easy to apply a compression garment in those, in those areas, not as easy. So there may be areas that you, know, that you may not be able to, to place a sleeve or a stocking on and the elastic taping certainly helps with that. Another alternative method is dry brushing. Uh, so dry brushing is something that we can learn about on, the, on, on YouTube, for instance. It's not something that I was trained in. It's an, it's an alternative measure, but it, it does help to facilitate the movement of lymph um, by gently um, stroking the skin with a natural bristle brush. So in, in conclusion of that part of things, I'd just love to say to you how, how effective uh, it is to get lymphedema tra treated. It's not woe well beyond to me. It's, it, is, it is possible regardless of how the leg may appear to you or how many years you have had it. As is seen, this is a before and after picture of one of my clients. And definitely there, they, he, you know, he was ecstatic. He, he always said, I feel as if I was walking with a brick strapped to my leg. And he's now so happy to be able to walk and to, you know, to be able to wear shorts, for instance, because his leg is no longer as it was before. Another one. Uh, so, uh, Elaine, I don't know if you want to come in now. Uh, there are a couple of things that patients can do or individuals can do to increase their risk, but I'll allow someone else to uh, have a go. Uh, if you want me to proceed, I will. 
okay, um, Dr. French, and there was a there was a question. I guess I could I could answer this question. Go yeah. ahead. Someone dropped in the chat is asking, why do we remove sleeves at night? Why do you have to remove the sleeves at night? Okay, so that is related to the to the existing pressure um, or, or how, how fluids are distributed in your body. So when you're horizontal, as, as opposed to when you're upright, you may find that uh, the arm, for instance, has more blood flow into it. So the fit of a sleeve may become tight at night. Night garments that are worn for individuals who require compression at night uh, are, have a reduced pressure. So it's, it's a safe thing to do so that you don't, your garment does not become constrictive as opposed to compressive. So we want nice, even compression at the correct pressure. We don't want to run the risk of a garment getting tight at night because that it could potentially be harmful. Okay, okay. All right, so we're gonna definitely bring you back on. First, let's have more Thanks questions. For the question, Roxanne. <laughs> yes, okay. So we have, um, thank you, Dr. Frenton. So just stick around, stick around. Hey, someone is saying something in the chat. I was asking if we have, well, we have access to the PowerPoint. <laughs> uh, components of it, yes. Components of it, I, 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 I'm prepared to share, but uh, it's, it's- so I guess when you're done, what you, what you yes. can do with Dr. Frenson yes. and then you can let, it, let me have it, then yes. I probably could share with who, who needs it. Okay. Okay, so, all right, so stick around. I'm gonna call on, let me see if, if um, this session here, what I wanted to call it is say, living with lymphedema. So many of us, like I say, well, three of us on that are on and, and are living with this disease. I hate to call that word. I, mean, it's, I hate to call that word, but that's what it is. But there are many of us living with this, with lymphedema and want to share. So I'm gonna call, um, and are you ready to, to share? And this is Anne, and let me see if I can make you make you a host. And um, Anne is from Grand Turk. <clears throat> so Anne, you can share and um, your your views or your your story, that is. Wow. Hello? Yes, go ahead. Go ahead. We're listening. Oh. Afternoon, everyone. Sorry for that. I'm Anne Elizabeth Williams. I'm from Grand Turk. And I have lymphedema. I had lymphedema now for the past, know what lymphedema was for the past eight years. I have been to the hospital constantly with swelling in my legs and ankles up, but never had a diagnosis for what was going on with me until I meet a very sweet, beautiful young lady called Miss Monica Jones. And she, and her, me and her met at the hospital and she said to me, me and you keep coming here. We don't know. They keep giving money around, not telling us what's wrong. So she get in contact with Dr. Malcolm. Dr. Malcolm get in contact with Mrs. Brockley, Dr. Brockley. And we all end up into Jamaica to Dr. Frankenson. Dr. Frankenson is the one who diagnosed me and told me that I have lymphedema. Never heard that word before. I still don't know what that word is, but that's what she said that I have. And being in her care, she educated me, she educated my children, and she cared for me. Living with lymphedema, I must tell you guys, it's not easy. If anybody who know me, they know that I'm a person that always on the go. I'm used to working 16 to 20 hours a day. I'm used to, I miss working with my red cross, doing my fundraising. I used to do my catering. All of that has stopped for me because of my lymphedema. And then it get a little worse for me since I haven't been able to go to Jamaica for two years because of having an 
and coronavirus and all that sort of stuff. But it's not easy. Living with lymphedema, you need to have a good, good support of family. Because right now I'm here and it is really hard for me because I can't get around like I used to. And I'm oh, sorry, sorry. It, it's really hard. Um, I like to thank my kids. I mean, you guys are the best. You guys being there for me throughout everything. And it's, I, I can't really explain to you what it is, but it's not a nice feeling. I don't have proper rest in the night. My legs are always swelling. And most of the time in the night is when all the pain get you because when you lay down in bed, then your legs get so big, so swollen and it's so painful. By the grace of God, I'm here and I give God thanks, I give God praise. And sometimes the pain is so much is that I have a few friends that I don't know, for some reason, they always know when I'm in pain. And I would just like to thank them for always letting me forget about that pain for that one, five or 10 minutes. Robert Williams, thank you. John Simmons, oh my God, thank you. And I can't leave out Amazon Hall. You're the crazy of all. But I must give God thanks. I, I can't stress that enough that I may not be able to walk as much to get around, but I'm still alive. And I need to stress this to everybody, not because you are heavy, that lymphedema is for heavy people, it's not. I've seen small people with lymphedema and it is hard. Um, right now, my arm, I have lymphedema. I have reoccurring blood clot that been in my leg. I have chronic arthritis and I have congested lungs. So you guys know, but in care of Dr. Frankerson, she teach me a lot. I learn a lot from her with lymphedema. They take me as their family. They treat me with care. And guys, if you see swelling in your legs, don't wait like me when the doctor's telling me, oh, there's too much weight you're putting on. Um, my toes, the hell can move my toes, my ankles are swelling. And I haven't been able, I had to leave work. I haven't worked in over two years because of all the swelling and everything in my legs. So guys, take it seriously. It can happen to anybody. If you see swelling in your legs, don't let it say, oh, because I've been walking on my legs for too long. No, it's not. Check it out. You never know. And this is what I say for now until someone else come on. Thank you, Elena. Thank you, and thank you. Thank you so much. Guys, I mean, I can, as Anne was speaking, trust me, I can relate to everything that um, she's saying. It's, it, it's, it's, it's a challenge, it's hard. And like she say, thank God for the support of family. Let me tell you something. <laughs> if I, just like for her, if, if it wasn't for my family, I don't think I'll be able to go through the, the daily challenges of lymphedema. You know, and I can always say when, whenever it's time for me to go away for treatment, as you know, then they don't have any facility as yet on the islands. So we all have to go to Jamaica. We all have to um, pack up, leave our family for six weeks or more to do um, treatment. And, and that could be so hard, so hard leaving your family, you know, and, but I'm thankful that um, I, was, I'm, I was allowed to take someone with me. And most of the time it will be my mom or one of my daughters, uh, my daughter, Khadija, and I am so, grateful and thankful for them because joint the treatment is, is very limited much that you can do because you be so, you have to be in um, wrapped with garments and um, you can imagine, imagine, I, I remember when I first got um, treatment in, in, in Jamaica with Dr. Frenson, 
And I think there was a movie coming out after that. She was like, y'all want to go to the movies? My mom and I, I was like, what? Me go to the movies looking like a mommy? Wrapped from thighs straight down and people would be staring at me. But you know, it, it was so confident. She's like, you can do it. You can go, you know, it will be a good exercise. And I remember that night going to the movies all wrapped up, people looking at me like I was crazy. But hey, at that moment, I felt great because I always had that um, um, fairness of, of person seeing my legs and stuff like that. So over the years, I've gained confidence and I try to educate persons when they stare, when they ask me, what is it? What is, um, what is happening? Or, you know, because you get that stare. So I try to flip the script and just educate them on what it is. So with that said, I'm going to call on Makisha Mitchell. Makisha and I connected because I'm, I'm a part of a few lymphedema groups on Facebook. And Makisha and I connected in one of the groups and she's gonna share a bit of her story um, living with lymphedema. Now, uh, Makisha, let me promote you so if you are to host. Are you there, Makisha? Yes, ma'am, I am. <laughs> okay, so you can cut, you have, you have your cam on? Okay, I'm here, okay, yes. right. Okay, so I'm gonna mute out and, and you just let me know, um, you know, what you want me to do. I'll be right here. Before you go, I do have my slides. Do you want me to screen share? Or okay, you, you can do that. You can okay. do that, be easier, much easier. Okay, well, hi everyone, I'm Markeisha. Most folks just call me Keisha because the Mar gets them tripped up a little bit. Um, I'm so grateful to be here and I wanna share with my sisters from the islands that um, I feel your pain, I understand. And I, 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 I'm sending you my love and my thoughts of good healing and peace to you because um, living with lymphedema is a trip. That's the best I can say. Um, let me try to screen share really quickly. And I'll start my story. Let's see. Okay, let's make this large. Uh-oh. Can you guys see that? There you go. Can you guys see that? Um, I'm just going to jump right in and we'll get started. Um, this is my little presentation here. And I like pictures because that's me at 16. I'm thinking I'm pretty cute. Um, and hopefully you guys can see that. If you notice here, my dress here is my cute foot. At the age of 16, that's what my leg looked like. Um, I, didn't, I didn't know that there was anything quote unquote wrong. I knew I had some puffy ankles um, and bless my dad's heart. His thing was when I would see him, he would um, always rub my feet real gentle, real soft, and he would rub them up. I don't, he knew something was going on, but no one really knew what. And like I said in the, um, my little quote up there, my, I had no pain that I understood I had. My greatest discomfort were the incessant questions. Girl, what's wrong with your ankle? Or why your feet look like that? Or, hmm. So I became real skilled and apt at camouflage. Um, and I became really good at wearing my long maxi skirts, my boots and my jeans, even in 100 degrees hot heat in Fresno, California. I'm born and raised in Oakland, California and went to school in Fresno. Um, but I'm gonna tell you this in retrospect, what I understood, um, it's hard to explain something as an abnormal finding when you're used to it all your life. Um, I would have tingling feelings. I would have tight skin feelings. Um, sometimes it felt like little electric jolts in my foot. Um, but I didn't know to report that as abnormal. It was just a part of my life. So you kind of throw your shoes on and stuff that shoe in your shoe, stuff your foot in that shoe and keep it moving. I mean, I'm a 16 year old girl. I'm thinking about the boy I'm at prom with um, and trying to just be a 16 year old. I didn't know that there was something really, really wrong. Um, fast forward um, to the picture down below with, with me and two other cute little boys. That's me in my early 20s. I'm about 24, 25. I'm early, early, early pregnant at that time. But I don't know if you can see in the picture that I zoomed in on my ankles right there, there's already a problem. That foot there is stuffed into that shoe. 
but this, the skin integrity and the elasticity of my skin has already been compromised. I should also add that I am a nurse um, and through my experience with living through lymphedema, the serious infections and assaults on my skin and my inside of my body, I understand that here, even at this point, this should have been addressed, but I didn't know. I just knew that I wasn't gonna be wearing those cute high heel stilettos, stuff that foot in that shoe and keep it moving. Um, oh, okay. So like I said, in my early twenties, I had in my early twenties, I'm living in Baltimore. Just a little bit of background. I'm trained in science, I'm teaching, I'm having kids, I'm growing my family. And I'm actually married to the cute guy from the prom. He's actually a medical student at Johns Hopkins University. That's the place I was going for all my medical care from my routine visits to having babies to everything. And even though I'm at the number one medical school in the country, there are good physicians there. I do not recall um, being educated, diagnosed, or schooled on what was going on with my lower limb. I'm going to back up. The doctor, doctor, what was her name? Frankson mentioned how um, lymphedema is also a skin issue. That's what I understand that to be today as well. I also have another autoimmune disease, psoriasis, that seriously affects the integrity of my skin. My skin is, I, I have to be very, um, I have to stay on top of it to watch my skin integrity. So I've had two cellulitis infections in my 20s. I'm young, I'm active, I'm moving. I'm still walking around with those swollen feet. Um, take my antibiotics, get over the infection. Yeah, I got some swelling, but I keep it moving. I say that, to, um, I mentioned that because the time for intervention really would have been in my teenage years, definitely in my 20s. I just did not know, and those who are, tending to my care didn't know. In my 30s, by this time, I'm here in Texas. Um, I'm in nursing school because I had nothing else better to do with four kids and a husband but to go back to nursing school. So I'm in nursing school and I don't feel pain per se, but I had a lot of discomfort in this region here. And in fact, what was happening is that my inguinal um, lymph node was inflamed. So that's lip endinitis, infection. By the time I felt this discomfort, I'm already, already very sick. What happened is somewhere along the way, I had a skin break and I had a cellulitis. That was actively going on, but that infection got into my system. Um, I went from smiling, happy-go-lucky, get her done, Keisha, to um, I'm laying in bed, my foot is hanging out, and I'm not really caring who's caring for the kids, what's going on. My husband comes home, and he's, it takes a lot to freak my husband out. He was very concerned. He knew as a physician that whatever was happening to my body, I was not very, I wasn't in a good space. Um, long story short, I ended up in the hospital for about two weeks. Um, IV antibiotics, and they were concerned about things like um, compartment syndrome. Compartment syndrome is when you have an affected limb that is so swollen from the fluids that um, you have some, things aren't going so good. Uh, that's the best I could put it. Um, I started to have, um, let's see, where am I at? Yes. The leg was very swollen. I'm going to just get back on on schedule. My leg was very swollen. The skin was taut. And worse than that, I couldn't feel my outer toe. So like if someone stepped on my pinky toe or the girlfriend next to it, I wouldn't have noticed unless I had a scuff on my shoe. Um, and again, this thing started to happen over time. So this is where the true learning of about my lymphedema and self-care truly began. I um, after the hospital stay, um, they gave me time to recover. Um, the time to actively treat my, to start the decongestive therapy was not at that time. I needed to get my, um, my system needed to recover from the assault of having a um, systemic infection in my bloodstream, frankly. That's what started to happen. 
I was at Memorial Hermann Hospital receiving treatment from a wound care doctor, Dr. Moss of Memorial Hermann. Meeting him really changed my life and it was a true education about lymphedema. I met him and we started intensive decongestant therapy, which was what was described by the sequential wrappings of the body. Um, and it's not just plain on wrapping, there's a certain way to do it so you protect it, the, protect the health of the skin and um, encourage the fluid to move. So I don't know if you guys can see my little pointer here. So here is what we I refer to as sub wraps. That was the, um, it's a really loose cotton soft weave that goes directly on my skin to prepare my body for the wrapping. Of course, this is after my skin is clean, it's dry and it's adequately moisturized. I will, the pre-wrap is what the therapist would put on me. After that was here, sequential wrappings of the um, using different um, short weave of a variety of type. Here, this little nasty white one is, is clean. This is what I use to wrap or what they use, and they taught me how to do it at home, to wrap my individual toes. My toes can get so swollen. It is unbelievable. And coupled my lymphedema with my skin changes and, um, and condition with my psoriasis, I can have lifting of the toenails. Um, it ain't cute. I'm glad my husband didn't marry me for my feet, honey. Um, but this really helps. So toes, and I will wrap this um, with the sequential wraps. Additionally, what the therapist would use would be here. I call them phone chunks. She had those all over the all, all over to target places where my skin had demonstrated um, weaknesses, especially for my case was around the ankle. My ankle area would start to kind of fold over the top of my tennis shoe. Not a good look, but here she wanted to help target that. That went on three days a week for about three weeks for me. Um, my um for three weeks for me and it was as she explained you go in get the wraps go home do not take them off um i'll be honest it is not a fun process it's nice getting rubbed though because that does feel good it's a really light effleurage light soft rub but um having those wraps and trying to sleep with them is incredibly uncomfortable um I would have to go to bed, try to sleep at night. Frankly, I would sometimes take my little anti-inflammatory and a Benadryl because it would be, and I'm not endorsing anything, I'm just sharing my story um, because it was very difficult. After that time from major decongestant therapy, my therapist and my Dr. Moss taught me how to take care of myself at home. It was essential that I continue manual lift there, lift lymph drainage therapy on my own at home. And I'll describe a picture of that later. I also wanted just to show some of my gear that I need in order to survive life. So here are my daily compression stockings. I love Medi flat weave, they're thick. I will wear them if it's 105 degrees in Texas because me not wearing those is gonna make for an awful day. There's something about having that congestion in your leg and that heaviness in your leg, it's exhausting. I start off the day great and fine, but at the end of the day, mama's done. So those really helped me out a lot. Additionally, I have, I was prescribed because these, um, my compression gear is a prescription. Um, I was prescribed and measured by a professional for my nighttime gear. Well, actually I was measured for my daytime gear, for my nighttime gear. This is my Joby pack. She is tailored to fit my leg at, the, at its healthiest point. And with my life changes or my leg dramatically changes, I will need to go in and get fitted again for a garment. So this is my Jovi pack, which is my nighttime compression gear. It's quilted, have only a small, small stretch, but I wear that at night. That is not the most comfortable to wear, but I've become accustomed to wearing it. There are some nights I have her on and I wake up and she's across the room. Don't know how it happens, that's my Joby pack. 
Additionally, here's my toe glove because I told you I have the involvement of my toes and some paraesthesia with my outer three baby toes. <laughs> Not the cutest thing, but it is what it is. I wear this toe glove. This toe glove really helps with the um, swelling um, of my toe. And here is my, my happy friend, the Mallow Train. She is um, slight compression and I'll show you how I wear her. And this is what she looks like on the inside. She has padded sides to help that loose skin that has lost its, its true elasticity and its structure around my ankle. My ankles ain't so strong no more, y'all. And here is my brush. She looks like that because I use her in the water, but she's a natural hair, natural soft hair bore brush. And I use her in the, in the shower and I brush up. So that's, that's a part of my happy gear there. Um, I, um, I wanted to add to when I first went in for decongestant therapy, this was um, enlightening to me. The therapist measured both of my legs at different, sections up my leg to see the difference in circumference around. And she noted there were times where I had a difference in liters worth of fluid on my little old body. And this is before I was extra chunky from COVID. I won't go into that. Well, I will go into that because that plays a part into my lymphedema and how I'm managing today. Um, let me go to the next slide. What do I have here? Oh, my self massage. Let me tell you, I used to go back and forth with Dr. Moz about this because self-massage takes time. And sometimes by the end of the day, I'm exhausted and I don't do it. So there will be times when I would go and check up with him and he will look at me and look at my leg and say, hey, you haven't done it. Or he will look at me and look at my leg and say, hey, good job, girl. <laughs> when I know that he knew, he could tell. Because really, I wasn't a believer in it. I could, I did not believe that me sitting here pressing on my neck to open my lymph system, pressing under my arms to open up those lymph systems, and going under my belly and doing the sequential effleurage smooth rubs, that it would really make a difference in my lymph movement. But the truth is, it is evidence based, and it does make a big difference. Um, so. Do your manual, do your self massage. It helps. Um, and so I'm a believer because I've seen it work in me and the evidence is there. So these were the, um, this was the route I would take. It, it does not help to do your manual self massage for lymph movement if you just start at the legs. You've got to open up your lymphatic system. So it's great to do this after exercising or after moving. Um, so that's that. Another part that's important about um, self-care is my nutrition. Um, this is a topic sometimes I see on the message boards, people get real sensitive and I'm sensitive about my weight too, but I'm gonna tell you, um, even at 115 pounds at age 16, my lymphedema, was present. And even at that time when you saw my foot in that cute dress with the cute boy, um, I was already staged. I should have already been staged and damage had already been done. Um, I know for me today that I need to maintain a healthy weight. And for me, I have to watch for added salt and also sugars. My body does not handle being under a state of inflammation well. So I need to act accordingly. Um, I know that I'm at my best when I'm watching my nutrition. I also know that I'm at my best when I'm exercising. I don't need to go and be hitting it hard, but sometimes I use, well, not sometimes, in the past I used to. I'll talk about what I'm doing currently shortly. Um, exercise while wearing my garments, my compression garments, because it helps my body to do what my body would do if it didn't have this challenge. Um, it is vital for lymphatic flow. I need to do all I can. And frankly, lightweight training was very helpful. I found, I saw a big significant difference in my swelling. Um, my daytime compression devices are important. Got to wear my evening. And those who have pumps, they should use their pumps. I didn't have to use a pump um, because my body responded and I was compliant to what my doctor told me. And most importantly, I've got to listen to my body. You guys got to listen to your body too. Whether you have lymphedema or not, listen to your body. Um, well, 
factors that make my swelling worse, driving. <laughs> Sitting in the car for long periods make my, my swelling significantly worse. Let me see if I can show you that. That's what's going on now. Um, air travel. When I travel by air, I usually just, I, I wear my stockings. Sometimes I double up. I have to. Um, too much salt or sugar encourages my body to swell. Old garments, it's important. They're not cheap. And if you don't have the good insurance, sometimes it's still paying a lot out of pocket. It's important that your garments are adequately, appropriately fit for you. They are a prescription folks and that you take care of them. Um, surgery, I am, I'm not a good candidate for surgery and I'll talk about that in a minute. Illness and infection, I have to wash my skin. Even though I have psoriasis in my body, my body's like waiting waiting for the opportunity to have an infection so it can just sit there and fester. I have to really be very judicious about skin infection, which is why you will never see me going to get a pedicure. My Dr. Moss told me never, ever, ever, ever get a pedicure because I just won't work out right for me. Weight gain. Um, I'll be honest and I'm just going to be out there. You know, I Thanks to coronavirus. No, it's not coronavirus. It's thanks to me. Um, I was less active, a little bit more stress, and not eating as I normally should during this whole lockdown coronavirus. And I'm about 20 pounds heavier than I should be. And I'm going to tell you, folks, it has been very um, challenging maintaining my swelling. Just And I noticed that over 10 pounds or 20 pounds, I have to keep a very strict control over it It's because it's uncomfortable. Um, so I, for me, weight gain, it doesn't, it doesn't allow for my lift system to be open as it could and to do the work as much as it could. Um, injury, um, I'm clumsy, but I take that back now. I've learned that my clumsiness may have been secondary to my weakened ankles, my weakened system, having all of that fluid that sometimes protein rich, just sitting there and not really being a much use, um, not helpful. So it made me a little clumsy. Another thing that I did have because I was curious after I became a little healthier, my doctor asked me if I would be willing to be a part of a study. Um, and I that for a lymphocentogram. That's when they inject a little bit of dye into your lymph system to see how it goes. After um, you have the dye into your system, <laughs> I know that sounds crazy, but it's not that bad. There's real, real small pricks. Um, and they put me on antibiotic therapy after, and I had antibiotic cream on the outside just in case. Um, I was sent for radiologic, radiography studies. And it was astounding to see what my lymph fluid did once it was circulating compared to that of someone who was healthy. My lymph fluids got to my lower limbs and it just was sluggish and stayed there. And it started to glow instead of flow back up to the lymph tubes like normally. So I don't know. I don't know why I needed extra confirmation, but if it's not there, it's there. Um, Hot weather makes me swell a little bit more, and I live in Texas, but the hot weather makes me feel better with my skin psoriasis and my psoriatic arthritis. That's a whole nother webinar, y'all. And dehydration. I have, a ha I have to have a good fluid balance. So if I'm drinking too much water or fluid or not enough, that's a problem. Here, what's going on today? I told you guys about my little bit of the weight gain, and it's been harder for me to control, and I haven't been exercising. This is what my bottom leg looks today. And this is not the worst it's been, but I know better. So that means I've got work to do. So right here, I'm currently getting laser treatment therapy for my podiatrist who also understands lymphedema. And let me tell you, it's, um, it's a simple wavelength. I don't know what wavelength it is, but it's musculoskeletal laser therapy that's supposed to aid in pain and um, inflammation. And it really does help. After my therapies, it is cumulative. I see that my swelling has improved a lot. Okay, I must keep going for time. So I'm gonna wrap it up in a minute. Um, I My hope is that I get back to a little bit normal. This is me on a good day. I tried it, y'all, but I knew better. I, 
this was a day I was feeling kind of cute, but I went back in and put on my stockings. Um, I must wear my compression stockings daily. I must exercise and I've got to watch my nutrition. I cannot be offended when Dr. Moss looks at me and says, hey, you're getting a little big. That's just how my doctor talks. And you know what? He's holding me accountable and he's right. How I stay looking cute, y'all, for me is boots and maxi skirts and jeans. I'm used to it. I'm, I, I've just gotten used to it. Um, I want to live life. I want to be myself. I want to go out and do things. So I live in boots and orthotic boots too. They got some cute boots for people with crazy feet and, and tennis shoes. So this is me. I am wrapped up all the way up to my thigh. Um, and this is a, a men's pair of Converse. Sometimes I got to go a couple sizes up so I can fit all my compression gear inside. And additionally, I do have primary lymphedema and guess what? So does my daughter. This is my daughter's sweet baby girl, Layla. She's about six years old. And it's funny because my dad, he's got a thing with feet. He noticed her foot was swollen and was just, he just rubbed it, just rubbed it. So um, I, I remain grateful and inspired because of my experience and what I've learned along the way, I can impart to her. And she's 20, she, she's on her feet a lot, but she knew at a young age, she started wearing her compression stockings about age, about 12. Um, she knows that what could possibly happen. So she's educated and she's has the early intervention and her stage is at zero. So um, thank you for listening. And um, I just hope that you all stay healthy and take care. How do I stop sharing? <laughs> okay. Okay. Thank you so much, Keisha. My pleasure. Thank you so much. That was, oh, that was, that was awesome. Um, I love that presentation. <laughs> I wish I was, I wish I was um, disciplined like you. I'm sure my therapist listening right now and like, <sighs> that, I, I don't think I'm, I'm not, I'm not disciplined. I must admit that. And then what it is, is that I cannot wrap myself. Mm -hmm. I cannot wrap myself. Um, family members, like so who usually would travel with me. I wouldn't say, um, it's like, you know, you all the time you don't want to impose on them and none of them live physically in the house with me. Yeah. So it's like that wrapping, um, it ain't gonna happen unless I have, like if I had to go to someone that can help me do the wrapping or build something. That's why I, I really feel like there should be a place or and, and I hope in the near future that there will be a place that can help us rather than, you know, we have to wait and go um, travel off island. And then you mentioned there about traveling. That's another thing. And Keisha, that was my traveling. That was my passion. <laughs> I used to travel a lot before I actually even got diagnosed. And I yeah. think that's probably what it even really escalated to because I used to travel. I had friends just to say, Elaine, It'll be like um, today, and then we go into we going to the Bahamas tomorrow, and I'm there. That's you know that's how I was at a younger you know when I was younger. So um, and I I got um, really the swelling with me mm -hmm. came on I think after my last daughter. She's she's right now 21, and I noticed my legs started swelling um, ridiculously. Let me say that because before, like you say, all I'd be saying all oh, because. Um, you know, the, the doctors diagnosed me as having high blood pressure. So, okay, my feet are swelling. And so that was basically what I thought was happening. But after having my daughter, like about two years after her, my leg just, I mean, oh. And then don't talk about the cellulitis. I heard you mention about mm -hmm. having cellulitis. So girl, you said how many twice you had it? I've, I've had two cellulitis events, but the last, the third cellulitis event, I became a little septic, honey. So that's very dangerous. Yes, that's people yeah. know we can we can we can maintain it all we can, but when cellulitis, that's when it becomes so dangerous. Yeah. And um, what happens is that you get in a, that your your tissues are under another assault. So that compounds your situation. So it makes recovery even diff, more difficult. But yes. 
got you got to live life. You got to stay hopeful. And frankly, you got to hold yourself accountable. And it is tough. But girl and guys, you can do hard things. So, yeah. When I when I first got diagnosed, I remember my first my first therapy was in Miami when I first got diagnosed. And I I told the story to a few persons. And I always like to say, I think I diagnosed myself. Because after having a, a lot of um, cellulitis attacks, I've probably been in the hospital like three times before I actually know exactly what was going on. And the last one, the last attack before I was actually diagnosed um, medically, I could not walk. I mean, any, any longer that I was in my house, I remember my girlfriend came over to the house and I'm telling her I have a fever. And she's like, well, you gotta go to the hospital. You know, she's trying to get me dressed. I literally couldn't walk. She had to call somebody because I could not put my leg on the ground. I'm there wondering what is going on. Yeah. And you know, the doctors, I remember the doctor um, telling my mom that if I didn't come there, um, you know, the time that I came, it would have been a, a, a bad turnout. Yeah. It would have been, I remember having a fever so high, getting sponge yeah. bath. They had to really to, to help me get the fever reduced. So it was a, you know, and throughout the years, I'm gonna tell you throughout the years I've been, since getting diagnosed, I've been, um, I had cellulitis I would say about six times, yeah. probably within last uh, last year, or year before I should say, because I find and I found myself, and that's like you said, and I don't want to make any medical claims or any products, you know, we try to yeah. stay away from that, but we're yeah. talking on what works or what we find ourselves or what helps mm -hmm. us, but, um, there is, like I said, uh, in the next segment, there is a, a natural doctor. Mm -hmm. She's going to come on and just share something. And, it's, and it, it is a, a, um, some products that I've been using. Now, mm -hmm. I'm not going to say it's nothing. We're not going to say it cures lymphedema. But it's just that it would help me keep out of the hospital with cellulitis. Oh, and I've no. been on it for two years. I haven't been admitted to the hospital. And like wow. I say, I've been having them. And thought it was like 2018. I'm gonna I'm sure I've been in a hospital about six times. And yeah. it's and cellulitis easily comes on when like you said when the skin is broken. Yeah. And and then you know, and I noticed if I had if I get bite by a ants, it's easily you scratch, you gotta you gotta really be make sure no rat ants. Mm -hmm. Whatever you know, so and of course you have to maintain proper hygiene because when you start the itching and you know and once that skin gets broken then it's easily the um, infection and i don't want i don't i hate the fact of got, got to go on antibiotics because yeah. the minute you take antibiotics you gotta you gotta take something else to to help with what the antibiotics is going to do <laughs> so right i right. try, yeah. I I mean, try to stay away from that bacteria are everywhere they're a normal part of our life and they help these bodies have bacteria yeah. all over on the outside but the body the skin is a protective layer and when you have a break in there there's a portal yeah. of entry and our bodies god bless them our lymph system is not moving enough so it's just, how about you drink this stagnant water that's been sitting in the pail outside for 10 days you know it is it's not good so that stagnant or that's that fluid that's been stuck in our bottom of our legs for whenever it's just yeah. ripe and ready to grow and ah uh, so yes my yeah. job is not to help that so rat exercise and i and some people ain't gonna like this you got to get out of denial girl you got to move and even if it means you're doing chair exercises or flexing your ankles back and forth back and forth and there's some days I don't go. And, and that's what happened to me this past year and a half of coronavirus. I was not exercising the way I, my body is used to. Our bodies are meant to move. And so now I'm back in my laser therapy <laughs> and it'll get better. I already know what I need to do, but yeah. So. I need to get up, I need to get up with my game. I'm glad that I'm able to, to move. I'm, I'm honestly, I'm, you know, on, on, Unfortunately, some of us can't really move. Like um, the other morning, my husband um, started walking again and still him got up. 
and I know you're not going to play with me. <laughs> I feel like I was sleeping, but I, you know, I told him I would walk. I probably would just start probably in my, in, on my, in my yard, but the yeah. walking, like going, um, the distant walking on the street, I, tell him I can't do that right now, but yeah. I, I probably try just probably do, um, probably a little walking in the yard because trust me, I know when I go to Dr. Frenson, that'd be the first thing exercise. Mm -hmm. the exercise I, I know that I know that because she that that is also um she implements that in, in along with the with the treatment so yeah. to maintain it I know that I know for sure that it is but the, the wrapping is a big deal for me um before when I first got it I could sit on the floor and actually wrap but now um that ain't happening Dr. Francis came in <laughs> and you heard me talk <laughs> <laughs> some sometimes sometimes um i'm gonna tell you honestly when i first started going to her i'd be like oh god i wonder if i could call until i can't make it today you know because when i think about the exercising it's like but it, you know it all is good and it, and it helps and it, it helps so but dr friends and i it's been like what two years now that i've been because of because of the coronavirus and it, it you know because usually i would go um most of us would go like twice out of the year Mm -hmm. for um treatment to her down in jamaica mm -hmm. so um there's a question in the um come on, i have a question let me see what they're saying i think Keisha this um came on when you were talking can this be due to mineral deficiency calcium and magnesium maybe i think the person asked that question when you were talking i'm i don't know if they meant in general Mm -hmm. um, with lymphedema, I don't know if you, which which one of you want to answer that question. You, can you see the questions, Lou? Right. Let's see. Could this be due to mineral deficiency, calcium and magnesium? Um. Okay, I'm gonna put. Dr. Frankson may have way more insight than I do. Yeah, I'm just a little baby know. nurse here. The nurse in me says, be it lymphedema or anything, your mineral deficiency mineral deficiency get it corrected check it out you know and sometimes we forget food is our medicine when you are deficient in too much calcium and too magnesium on the way other scope it can affect your heart health so um it, yeah figure that out yeah that's the first thing i'm mute i'm mute i'm mute thanks sorry about that so not directly yeah. But indirectly, anything, anything metabolic that could precipitate swelling uh, could, is managed by your lymphatic system. Mm -hmm. all, right? so all swelling is managed by your lymphatic system and it has what you call safety factors. So it can, your lymphatic system can move as much as 10 times what it's moving normally. So if it exhausts that 10 times capacity, then it could potentially become lymphedema. But mm -hmm. most of the times, classical lymphedema is associated with uh, loss of mobility or movement of fluid. So it could be like, like, like Markeisha said, she did her lymph scintography and it showed the obstruction. It showed the, the network or the maze that existed in terms of how the lymph was moving. It wasn't finding its way up to the top of her leg into her trunk. So it, it was just sitting there. Uh, so usually there is some obstruction to the pathway whether it's because there's uh, a, a confused situation or whether it was because something was removed as usually happens in secondary lymphedema. I want to talk a little about the, the circulatory component of it because a lot of us have valvular issues. We have what you call chronic venous insufficiency yeah. and chronic venous insufficiency occurs when the valves are not closing and the blood backs up in the ankles and in the legs. If that is not addressed, Again, with a lot of exercise, possibly with medication, uh, addressing hypertension and so on, then this can become lymphedema. Mm -hmm. And when I see a patient with, with both, I say, okay, which do I handle first? Sometimes I have to go for the venous insufficiency if the swelling isn't too severe and um, get them moving. So motion is lotion. <laughs> yes. Yes. Okay. Um, okay, so what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna have you guys don't go anywhere. I have one, one other item on the program. Like I said, I want to just, I have Ms. Rhonda Isaac from Trinidad. Um, 
she is going to basically um, talk. Like I said, she's a natural doctor. Let me I can find her. And she is going to just, okay. Um, Rhonda, can you unmute? I have to, okay, I see you, okay. I, yeah, I just raised my hand. Okay, so you can come on. Give me one minute. Hi, good afternoon. Wait, hold on, hold on. I just, I don't know what I did. Let me, um, something I did. You can, can you open your camera? No, I'm not getting permission to. They said the host has to allow me to share the camera. Okay, I just see what I did. I, um, Oh, man. Sorry, but it's technical difficulty. I what I did is What I did, I asked, I assumed role to someone else on the on the panel. So now I'm I don't have the role to for you to share your screen. Oh. oh. Not share screen. Um open a camera, be the host. It wouldn't okay. no, it's it wouldn't let me. That's what I have to do in order to do it. If you know what I have to um is there a button that shows me to open the screen? Because I'm trying to do it, I don't see it. All I did is promote you to panelists. So I'm assuming that it will allow you to open your your cam. No, it's not allowing me to open the camera. Sorry. But that's okay. Once once they can hear it. Yeah. Good. Okay. That's a whole lot of anything. I guess you could go ahead. I'm. Um, I'll still try on my end, but you can go ahead. Okay. You talk. So we can hear you. So good afternoon, everyone, and thank you for having me here this afternoon. I am Rhonda Isaac, natural health pathologist out of Trinidad and Tobago. And um, I just got in on the tail end of the conversation um, dealing with lymphedema. And yes, understanding what we are dealing with in terms of how lymphedema operates and the things that affect it, one of the things that um, the doctor just highlighted its circulation and understanding that um, from my standpoint, I'm here to share um, the Sankey products and how they can actually assist in recovery of lymphedema because some of the basic stuff is what Sankey is able to start addressing. Circulation is one of the things because the Sankey product is able to help with microcirculation, not just circulation, but microcirculation, getting into the capillaries and improving your circulation, even at your fingertips and your toes, the furthest ends that usually get affected first. Um, additional that when you're dealing with lymphedema, the lymph nodes, one of the things that the lymph nodes is linked to, which is a part of the main parts of the body, is the immune system. And therefore, the Sankey products are able to help to build up the immune system. It is there to feed and improve the immune system because part of what it is able to do is address the microbiota, the microbes in our body, building up the microbes giving your immune system that build and that boost. And we have seen it delivering the nutrients and building up the immune system so that it is able to help with many of the immune deficiencies 
and many of the immune diseases it has been able to address directly. So understanding the microbiota, the microbe, we have actually now started promoting and identifying exactly what is able to work with because the Sankey products have been working on many levels with different things throughout the body because it is able to help build up the body, restore the body to what it's supposed to do, right? The microbiome in the body is being nourished because some of that is what the products are able to do. We are talking about products that were developed through 40 years of research. And in that, that research, they have been able to now pinpoint and identify some of the key things that have been affecting our health. And our microbiome development is part of what has been lacking. So the Sankey products now have been able to attend to some of that and address directly the microbiome which is now able to attend to the issues of the immune system, circulation, even sleep. All of these things tend to affect altogether the different things that is happening with the body. And this is where it is able to now address the issues with lymphedema because the lymph nodes and the lymphedema is connected directly in with the immune system. And the Sankey product is able to now open the valves to balance the body and bring back the homeostasis in the body so that recovery can start taking place. Ms. Elaine? Yes, you're still okay. I was just ready. To, yes, thank you. Thank you, Rhonda. Um, I, I'm sorry that I couldn't um, get you on the camera, but um, those are, some products, the Sankey products that I've been using, especially the Village and the Creno. Um, and like I mentioned earlier, I'm not claiming anything from like, you know, a, a lot of people are so sensitive when it comes to, um, when it comes to lymphedema and, you know, talking about products that, you know, gonna help or cure lymphedema. But I'm just saying that these products that I've been using helped me, and I, I know it helped me a great deal staying out of the hospital with getting um, increasing amount of um, cellulitis infections. And I am glad that I've been, I haven't been in a hospital um, on antibiotics, say, also for a full um, year going on a two, on two, which has been great. And so Rhonda, I want to thank you for giving us that. And um, and again, Rhonda, what is your what is your title again? What do you do? I'm a natural health pathologist, um, basically um, dealing with health on all levels on a natural standpoint, understanding that the body has the ability to heal itself. And part of what that is what the Sankey products are able to do in terms of getting into your system, feeding the body so that you can now give it the nutrients it needs. I heard um, one of the ladies was speaking about getting sufficient magnesium and calcium and to get better absorption. And that all of those things is what the Sankey products start to address in terms of delivering the nutrients into the body so that people can get relief. We are not claiming any cures or anything. We are just bringing the testimonies because Elaine is one of the testimonies that the products have been able to help with her health issues. We are talking about many things such as immune deficiencies, um, autoimmune diseases that has been affecting different people around the world that has now been able to get relief from their issues. Persons with things as severe as lupus and people, children who have had horrible asthma cases, children who were not able to walk and who are just being able to feed the body the right nutrition so that the body now can do what it was designed to do. Because we actually have a self-healing body. God gave us a self-healing body. And our body is just missing the nutrients that it needs 
to repair itself. So this is part of what the Sankey product has been able to do, step in and start feeding the body with the right nutrients, start opening the cells to get better absorption because even though we are eating foods, we are not getting the nutrients from the food because our body is not absorbing. And Sankey products have been able to now help open those cells, even the lymph nodes to get the absorption so that your body can start recovering and repairing itself. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much, Ms. Rhonda. Thank you so much. You're most welcome. Okay. So um, in this time now, we'll be wanting done. It's almost two o'clock. Um, there is, are there any persons on? Um, do you have any questions or are there any other persons on that is living with um, lymphedema? Would like to share I would say this story. You can um, raise your hand. If you have any question. Any question for the doctor? If you have any questions, anyone? I'm trying to look to see, I don't think I see anyone. Okay, so with, with that said, um, Dr. Dr. Frenson, you want to come back on? Um, if any last words you want to um, have to say, and closing, I should say. Okay, uh, I have a, a brief presentation I could do on everyday things that individuals could be aware of, like not taking their blood pressure. Um, on the involved side for patients who may have cancer related, breast cancer related lymphedema, little things like that. So I'll share my screen again if it's possible. Uh, it'll just yeah, you should be able to still share. Yeah, so it's a new share. So I'll go. Okay. So some of the stuff Markeisha covered, so I just want to reiterate these things, but other little components of skin, skin care, for instance, we try to suggest that you avoid using uh, a razor blade or a razor that has, you know, cutting edges, it's better to use something like an electric razor. Uh, if you have to be out in the garden a lot, make sure you're wearing, you know, long pants or if you're out, outside where you may be getting bites or cuts or bruises more, uh, Possible, it's more possible for that to happen. Then make sure you're wearing long pants or you're wearing gloves if it's your arm. Wear, wear natural repellents. Be careful of what you rub on your skin because not everything is, is, is going to be uh, managed effectively by your lymphatic system. Anything that goes in will have to be dealt with, uh, has to be absorbed and so on. What you don't want is to be using things that are not natural, natural things. Uh, so we want to avoid like heavy, heavy chemicals like DEET and, you know, things, you know, products that are very highly chemical. So the more natural ingredients, the better for you. Uh, we do know that there shouldn't be injections uh, done on the this lymphedematous skin because an injection is, is a wound. Uh, so for instance, if you're taking blood, if there is an involved arm, for instance, it shouldn't be done on that side. Sometimes veins can't be found and they have to go for your ankle. Uh, if possible, please let them know that there's lymphedema so that, you know, if it, unless it's a real dire emergency that this is not done. We also discourage piercings and tattoos on the involved areas, whether it be the arm, back or the chest. Uh, blood pressure should not be taken on the involved arm or leg if possible. Sometimes they do have to do what we call radiofemoral delays uh, where they do blood pressure in the, in the leg. If possible, again, we want for this to be avoided. We need to be very aware of those um, automatic uh, equipment, uh, automatic cuffs that most of the times will, uh, will, will increase the pressure way above what it's you know, needed to be. So we want to be sure that we're not using equipment that is too, too stiff or too tight in terms of the force that it generates. Uh, 
things that will increase lymphedema falls in two categories, those that will promote inflammation and those that will uh, increase constriction. So we spoke like about cuts and bruises and tattoos and so on. Those are things that your body will naturally uh, respond to or react to with an inflammatory reaction. So that's normal. Uh, but somehow with inflammation comes swelling. And if there's an obstruction to the movement of fluid, then this could cause your lymphedema to increase. But the other category also, also includes constriction. So tight clothing, uh, tight panties, tight jewelry, uh, bras that are you know, squeezing the shoulders, which, which really is an alternate route that we use. We want to be careful that, you know, they, for instance, you use spreaders to make sure that the, the fluid in the skin is moving, is not being obstructed or constricted by the bra strap. When you apply your stockings, you need to be sure that there are no, there's no doubling up of areas, that it's not, the top is sitting flatly as it should. It's best to ensure that you have silicone borders on your garments so that they tend not to roll, it sits flat. And of course, just avoid things that will be giving you uh, a squeeze such as puff sleeves, for instance, around the forearm or around the arm or uh, around the ankle. I notice where we're in pants again with elastic around the ankles, we have to be careful of the effect of elastic, uh, of elastic, that elastic banding effect in a circumferential way. Uh, Markeisha spoke about heat. Heat, the summer months, I see every lymphedema patient. And this is because heat increases blood flow. When it increases the blood flow, more lymph is manufactured, more lymph is formed in the tissues. So there's more fluid to move away. So we need to be careful about, uh, you know, keeping cool during the, the, the hotter climate, hotter months. And we need to, where possible, avoid it, not where possible. We must avoid excessive heat, such as saunas and hot tubs and whirlpools. Avoid sitting too close to a fire. We have to be careful in the kitchen when you are removing, uh, pots and pans from the oven, that you're wearing those nice long gloves if it's your arm that is involved, to just ensure that your arm is not exposed to heat. So can you get a massage? One has to be careful because deep tissue massage, for instance, increases blood flow, increases circulation. Annual lymph drainage is very superficial. It's different from traditional massage. So if you're getting a massage, one should be discouraged from having them, you know, if they don't know what they're doing, because the management of lymphedema is, is, highly, is a highly skilled um, specialization. And there, there are uh, massage therapists who say they do lymphedema or do lymphatic drainage or lymphatic massage. But I'd want to question the qualification to ensure that it is truly a component of complete decongestive therapy that is being done. Uh, even sunburn, we need to avoid being outdoors excessively because sunburn is going to create an uh, uh, increase in the blood flow to heal the damaged tissues in the skin. We spoke about the compression sleeves that they must be worn all day. Uh, as far as diet is concerned, it's, it's probably what we should be doing anyway, maintaining your ideal body weight. Uh, ensuring that you're on a low salt and low fat diet that's high in fiber. Uh, we shouldn't be reducing protein because that's not what makes lymphedema protein rich. It's the normal cells that are in the tissue. And of course, we must be drinking a lot of water. Uh, foods that are colorful and you know, rich in antioxidants are the things that are going to be anti-inflammatory in our diet. Uh, other components like you know, turmeric and berries and garlic, those are also additives chili, uh, any form of pepper really, all these are very antioxidant and very important in terms of the uh, anti-inflammatory uh, things that we can add to our diet to reduce an overall inflammatory state in our body. Uh, exercise, I just want to reiterate that exercise can hurt our health. So we have to recognize that yes, there are most things you can do, but it's important to start gently with your body. So yes, you can do weight training, but go light first and gradually build it up. Yes, you can run a marathon, but you have to be in, you know, you have to be getting there. You have to be getting those ankles, those legs strong. So you start with walking and then you gradually over a period of time, increase your pace and your distance. Swimming is excellent because it, it adds compression. It gives you that compressive component because the pressure in water is much higher than it is uh, on, in the air, in the regular air. 
Sometimes the type of exercise you do is important that you do wear your compression garment. So if you're going to the gym, you're going walking, please ensure that you wear your garment. Uh, comp uh, travel, travel definitely. When you go in an aircraft, it's not pressurized to the same degree that it is on the ground. So although they pressurize the cabin, it allows the skin to expand more than it would if you were down on, on the flats. So you have to ensure that you keep moving and that of course that you're wearing your compression garment. Sometimes you have to wear two or you have to wear an additional bandage over it. Uh, keep moving, choose an aisle seat so you can get up and walk down to the back to you know, pretend you're going to the bathroom if you're not and just come back and have your seat. So motion again is, is gonna keep those muscles pump, pumping. We have also found that driving long distances where you're inactive in that vehicle is also going to have the same effect. So keep pumping the muscles, keep moving the ankles around, keep moving the hands around, depending on the area that is involved. And if possible, take stops so that you can move around. And of course, stress. The systems that deal with stress are also the systems that will reflect stress, such as the skin breaking out in acne or uh, the appetite increasing the demand for sugar and so on. So we have to be able to maintain uh, some mindful component to how we manage our illnesses or manage our challenges in life by trying to keep calm and to solve the problem rather than worrying about the problem. That's it, Elaine. I just want to thank wow. you. I want to, before I go, to just say uh, thank you. I think this was a great idea and um, from no one better than someone who experiences the problem and I think this has really been successful and I, I, I just I'm very happy to answer any further questions you may contact me directly through my email uh, Elaine will give that to you so have a wonderful day everyone and uh, keep moving yes thank you so much Dr. France and you know this was, uh, I think I had spoken to you about this before, um, uh, 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 um, a while of doing uh, something like this. Also, we even we even explore the, the thought of you coming and actually having to, you know, persons coming to see if they have lymphedema. We, you know, we talked about um, trying to set up something like that also, um, you know, but thank you so much. I know, you, and I, I, I have to thank you, you're always available whenever I need you for something. And of course, thank you for all the years that you've been there and helping many of us here in the Turks and Caicos. <laughs> um, okay, I have a question I think I wanna to pose to you. I think um, with the coronavirus um, and now there's a vaccine out, what is your, um, what is your take on um, persons with lymphedema taking the vaccine? I haven't directly explored uh, it as a, as a contraindication because our lymphatic system, again, that has to deal with the virus. Uh, so when, when one looks at um, viruses like HIV, for instance, it's the T cell in particular that has to, that comes under assault. And I believe in, in, with the coronavirus, it is that same T cell or, and or other lymphatic cells that are assaulted um, as well. You know, so there are other, there are other cells like uh, cardiovascular cells that are impacted directly by the, the, the coronavirus, but it's your lymphatic system that also has to deal with it. And if these, if these obviously these cells had, did not know of this of this virus before, so there is no immunity. So it is the the lymphatic system is still going to be fighting it. I, I believe that we we need to look at what other comorbidities are coexistent with with the with the lymphedema, and I believe I really need to look at it some more without you know without giving a direct answer. But I don't know of any contraindication. In fact, it may be useful because your lymphatic system, your immunity system is already challenged, having to deal with uh, you know, swelling that isn't moving, a stagnant sort of situation. 
Um, I'm not sure if Markeisha has anything on that, but uh, she may have had her vaccine. Um, so let's hear what Markeisha has on that because uh, in the US they have already started to do vaccinations. Yes, they have. Um, I have not received my vaccine yet. I do a lot of work from home. So um, what's your take? Yeah, yeah. My, what's my take? Mm -hmm. um, I agree with you. There has not been any contraindications against it yet, but the way the lymphedema disease process goes, our lymphatic system needs all the help and support it can get. And the thought of an extra assault on it does not look good for me. Um, frankly, I believe in the, uh, eat your colorful vegetables. Your food is your medicine. You've got to move. It's a whole, we're not just our lymph system. We're a whole body system. Do what you can in your power to stay healthy. And frankly, when I will be getting the vaccine, my body does not, my body does not respond well to viral infections. Just going to say that. Mm -hmm. So that's a go. Yeah. Okay. okay. It's a go for me. Okay, and I'm sure your doctor would have told you no if you couldn't. <laughs> yeah, my husband's already received it, and my son, who's a healthcare provider and also immunocompromised, has already received both. Okay, oh. great. Yeah. Yeah. But I am I'm going to directly do some research on that, Elaine, because I think that's a very important question. Uh, there may yeah. be something in the literature. I know that the lymphatic system is directly involved in handling handling um, coronavirus, uh, so it does need all the help it can get. Okay, thank you. Thank you for that. I, I haven't received it as yet. Um, most persons in my family um, did already, but um, I, and, it's, and then it's a concern for me because of um, having lymphedema, you know, that's uh, one of the concerns with me, you know, with it. And I'm sure for many others who have lymphedema. Uh, then there's another question. Um, a lot of persons think, or um, explain to this, given that uh, I'm, I'm on the heavy side and I'm thinking um, the possibility of doing weight loss surgery. Does, if we have getting weight loss surgery, how would it be effective with me with lymphedema? That's a, a question I, um, I pose it right. <laughs> do you think it's a do you think it's a good thing and, and what is what scares me about when I'm thinking about it because my last surgery I had um, I had an infection afterwards I developed an infection and therefore you know that scares me if, I, if they have to poke any other hole in my body <laughs> you know that that really scares me in terms of that but um, do would you recommend doing weight loss surgery for persons? Um, and my size that are overweight. Okay, you just have to turn the TV on and watch my 600 pound life. Most <laughs> obesity is associated uh, quite often with lymphedema, not necessarily because there was lymphedema before, but it's one of the, the complications of obesity. So uh, as far as I know, there's no contraindication at all. It may actually help the problem. You're, you're, they have to be aware though, and I'm sure they are, that your risk of infection is handled optimally. So I'm looking okay. forward to seeing the slimmer version. <laughs> <laughs> I remember back in um, a, a few years back, I'm looking at my time, um, when I was um, in the care of one doctor, he's like, because I was always telling him, man, I am, could you please refer me to do this weight loss surgery? You know, but one thing I, before I go, one thing I must admit that with um, both governments you have that were in power, I can tell you that they helped, you know, because I've seen in the groups that on, on um, Facebook, especially, there's a challenge with persons with lymphedema getting um, medical insurance supporting them. And I must say that our government really come through for us, so, uh, a few of us with lymphedema, um, they really take all, all our garments, everything that we need, um, government pays for it, you know, so, I mean, we, it, 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 I guess it's covered under, we do pay a little um, um, Skype of insurance. So it's covered under that. So I must, I'm excited at that because I feel when I see persons in the group, um, you know, having to fight to get um, their insurance to cover it. And this therapy is not cheap. 
Dr. Fenton. <laughs> Um, and this, this, the therapy is not, you know, I don't, I'm, I'm saying, cause I don't, I don't think it's that it's, it's, it's costly. And it's like this one hour out of the one hour, you know, I guess it, it could be very costly. I remember when I first did the therapy in, um, in Miami, you know, and they, they were just blown away that the government paid for me because like, wow, you know, cause you know that the fight that persons have with their insurance um you know not supporting it not supporting um, lymphedema so thank you for that again thank you um okay i have before i go i think there's brianna brianna use on brianna um had to speak at another function today i don't know if you're there raise your hand for me Bri um, brianna okay I'm gonna allow you, let me see how we can do it to come in and just just um say a few a few words. Hold on, okay. Hello. Hello. Yes. Hi, you, you hi Brianna, go ahead. How are you? I'm doing excellent. <laughs> so before we go, just um share. Share a little with us. Um, I think you're you're actually a therapist, also. Yes, I am a massage therapist. Um, I'm certified in lymphedema, and um, so yeah, I'm treating people. I just got certified in the CLD, the decompression therapy. So that's fairly new for me. I've been doing lymphatic uh, for about 16 years. So I'm very familiar with the lymphatic system, but as far as lymphedema, I just got certified in that. So I'm still learning and want to um, offer that service for my clients. And I see so many people with stage zero and one. Um, so I'm just trying to help them prevent from getting a full lymphedema, so. Yes, yes. And uh, that is very important. Like I said, um, persons usually just take it as well. It's just a little swelling, you know, but, um, yeah. you know, you sometimes you should check. It just don't, don't be a little swelling. And even like my kids, when I see them, I, I said, listen, y'all need to go and check because I wouldn't want them to be out, um, live out a life like that and then not knowing what's going on, you know, and like, same exactly. thing, like basically what happened to me. So I encourage persons who are on, if you think you have some swelling or abnormal swelling somewhere, don't just take it for granted. Just go and check with your doctors. You know, and I think yeah. um, I, before doctors, I mean, here in the islands, I, that's how I, and this is my opinion, before there were a lot of doctors that I, I'm assuming because it was not very, um, very present here in the islands, I think it got overlooked. But yes. us here on the island with the lymphedema and, and, and taking a while to get, get have something done. Because I know with me, um, one of the doctors was like, oh, we have to do some research. And and I heard Dr. French and all or, or Makisha mention it. They're so close, um, venous deficiency and lymphedema, I think, are so close together that, because I remember at one point he was telling me that I have to research to do some research to make sure that it's not Venus deficiency, because that's at that time I'd already went and do my research, print off everything and took it to them and say, look, this gotta be what I have. Cause all the symptoms I'm facing, been in, been in and out of the hospital with cellulitis. I mean, that's the that's what I had I had to take to because at that point I couldn't see my foot. Literally couldn't see my foot from the swelling um that was going on, you know. But thank you so much, Brianna. Thank you for, for charming in. And where are you? Where are you from? I I am in Atlanta, Georgia. Okay. So yes, and and Brianna is also in um one of the groups that I'm in. So thank you so much. And how was your event today? Um, it hasn't happened yet. It's it's um I had a um I had saw clients earlier today, so okay. I was trying to be discreet and not 
I was trying to listen on, but I couldn't get on. So <laughs> yeah, so I know, but, but I know you have to speak is, also. Yeah, my event is um, at four today. So okay, all right. So I will try. I, I see the link. I will try to get on and listen. So thank, thank you, you for coming in and thank you for the support. Awesome. All right. All take right. care. Okay. Uh, okay. Before we close out. Um, I know pretty much, let me see, um, let me see, and, and you want to come back in and um, say something before we close out. You can unmute, um, and. Hello? Yes, you're on, we can hear you. <clears throat> um, just want to say, Thank you for hosting the show that we can educate people a little more about what, about lymphedema. And I want to thank Dr. Frankenson and Makisha, her name is, I'm sorry, I hope I pronounced it right. And I want to thank everybody who WhatsApp me, who call in, thank you. And most of all, I want to stress out, I want to thank my family, especially my children, who has been with me through this from the beginning to the end, taking me to Jamaica, being with me. I mean, especially Brendan, Donovan, Latisha, Jamaica, Nichelle. And then I have my Kianas, my grandson. Oh my God, thank him so much for always there, sleeping with me, helping me through the night, breaking his sleeper just to help me. And Elaine, I want to thank you so much for always we have not chat about lymphedema and how it affects us and i want to give god thanks that we are alive i'm not where i want to be but i thank god i'm here and i met a lady from the hospital and went her name is tara she's a therapist and that trains in lymphedema so I hope when my legs, because my upper legs are swelling really big and I can't move around to get out there, but I hoping that I can get, in, get there to her and she can work miracles on me so I can have my six pack back and I can wear my hot shorts again and I can show my legs. Yes. Just yes. <laughs> so guys, you know, we have somebody here now that who's training lymphedema. She's not my Dr. Frankenson, but she's trained in lymphedema so she can help us while we're on the island because imagine me being without therapy for two years. My body is out of whack. My legs is completely swollen, completely out of control. So Dr. Frankerson, is that how I hijack you? You're coming to me or you have to do something. If you just sneak in and come see me for a week or two, Shamika will make sure you've been taken care of. So I need you. My leg we will have to you. fight for her. We got, we'll have to you share know her. What I, mean? <laughs> um, I just want to thank you guys. This has really been great. And I have a lot of positive feedback because a lot of people didn't know what lymphedema is. They just look at you and say, oh, you just need to lose weight. But they don't know what's yes. going behind that. They don't know what it's like when you can't get out of your bed in the morning time. Your legs are so heavy to move around. You know, they see you, but they don't know what you go through. So I'm happy that Dr. Frankenson could have put some of the pictures up and show them what lymphedema is all about. And it's for real and it's a struggle. And I want to thank all my friends and family for supporting me. I want to give a special thanks to my wealthy. She's my mom away from mom that always take care of me, always have a bush medicine to help me out, always have a creams for me when I'm in pain. Thank you. I want to thank everybody and have a blessed afternoon. Thank you, Elaine. I love you guys. I love you too. And um, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Um, I know we have another um, person that's on that is um, the lymphedema, but I know she's shy. Um, but thank you for joining us, um, Tabs. You know, we all in this together. I call us now, we are lymphedema warriors. And I'm so excited I'm, I'm from hearing mm -hmm. and that we now, there is someone on island because trust me, the struggle is real when you have to leave 
for your home, like I mentioned earlier, get on an airplane for an hour and a half flight to go and do this therapy. It's it's a struggle. It's really a struggle. So I'm I will be excited and want to know more about that. Um, I know there's I, I've been in contact with someone from the hospital here in, in Provo. So I'm gonna you know keep um, close connection to see if or when they start um, the the program. So just like you said, they have a therapist there in Grand Turk. So I'm praying that the program will, will be um, available to us here in Providencialis. With that said, I want to thank everybody. I also want to thank my mom. I want to thank my mom. Oh my goodness, my mother. Um, sometimes I, I probably say like she's my... <laughs> My passport, she, she is, she's my all in all. Um, whenever I have to, or any medical issue, even, with, even within the family, I would say, mommy is always the one um, to travel with somebody. She's always that person available to, to, you know, to jump on, to go with you. Because mostly, you know, here, also in the islands, if it's something that cannot be, um, dealt with here at the local hospital, we have to be flown away to another medical facility. And I just want to thank my mother. She's always been there, the one to go with me. And then my daughter, Khadija, also. And then my other kids, which are very supportive. I just want to thank you guys, my whole family, and thank all of you that tune in to educate yourself. Thank you, Makisha, coming on from all the way in Texas. Um, thank you, Brianna for chiming in and you're from Atlanta. Thank you, Anne, right from here. Thank you, Anne. Um, when, I, when, I, when I message you, Anne, I always say, Anne, I hope you're not shy. And, I'm, and, and she said to me, shy? No, I'm not shy. <laughs> I said, okay. So thank you, Anne. Um, also, Rhonda from Trinidad. Rhonda, thank you. I'm sorry that um, I couldn't get your, your camera open that you could show the products, but the persons that want to know more about it, you can message me. There are daily, um, we have a daily meetings on these products. Um, so if persons want to know more, you can message me and I can I could um, enlighten you on it. So with that said, I just want to say God bless. Enjoy your Saturday afternoon. And before you leave, I please do me a favor, guys. Please do me a favor. Please go on Facebook and like virtual events by Elaine, virtual events by Elaine. I'm actually on Facebook and I'm actually on YouTube. I'm just trying to build a YouTube channel, but I'm actually on, on Facebook. Please like virtual events by Elaine to have, to get updates on events that we do. And my, my main reason for virtual events by Elaine is for, to have events like this and also targeting the family. Um, I have I have I have family nights where we do game nights. So like virtual events by Lean to be um, updated or when we have special functions coming up. So let me see some, I see some um chat come up. I want to see who all is in the chat. Okay. Okay, persons are commenting. Okay, thank you. God bless. Great presentation. Okay, thank you all. Thank, thank you all. This, this couldn't have been done without you guys' presence and support. So let's say God bless. Have a lovely Saturday afternoon.